Hi, I'm Tori Quisling with the Center for Clairvoyant and Psychic Development. Today we're learning about power animals and shamanism. You're here because you must have some interest in ancient shamanic practice. As a psychic, I've had so many opportunities to participate in shamanic practices uh, since I was young. And I find that it lets you go deeper into your own true self and understanding yourself as an ancient being. I've experienced shamanic practices uh, in the Native American tradition here in America, in California, and the Peruvian traditions, Peru, and Brazil. And then, of course, in my travels and tours of ancient Egypt, uh, shamanic practices go back thousands of years, and it's our original healing and medicine. So when you begin to explore shamanic practices, you'll find that it's the most experiential. It's not intellectual, it's experiential, which I find is really powerful. Shamanic practices let you journey into spiritual realms through a perceptual shift, because in an experience, you get to shift your perception. So as I read through these different advantages of shamanic practices or experiences, see which ones resonate with you Tonight, we'll be experiencing something that's shamanic, and hopefully it'll get you into a new perception of your own spiritual power, as well as just the ancient wisdom that we have on hand at all times. Shamanic practices can let you reach ecstatic states of consciousness. You feel a direct personal spiritual experience. You can have a revelation or a divination. You work in partnership with ally spirits. And that's what tonight is about. Power animals are ally spirits. You develop an animistic relationship with nature. You realize that you are part of nature. You're just one of the animals in nature. We uh, think about the four uh, directions, north, south, east, and west, as well as all the elements that are working with our bodies at all times, the earth, the fire, the air, the water. We work with sacred objects and tools, drums, rattles, sage, sacred smoke. We work with the dance and psychotropic plants. So percussion is the drumming that we hear and uh, dance, we're going to practice some dance. Um, sometimes people get really into shamanic practice and working with a medicine man, because you'd want to do that to make it grounded, work with psychotropic plants. Some people work with ayahuasca. It's not something that I do, but I, I know uh, that it's a very powerful experience, especially when you experience it with a medicine man. We can use shamanic practices in our rites of passage, ceremonies, and rituals, and it's also techniques for healing. So what are power animals? Our focus tonight is on power animals. And a power animal can also be called an animal guide, a spirit helper, a spirit ally, or an animal helper. Um, we're often aware of this animal since when we're young, we seem to enjoy seeing pictures of this animal, perhaps you always like a lion or you always like a wolf or a polar bear. Uh, sometimes these animals just show up in your life and uh, you see images of them and they seem to be around you. So a power animal in the shamanic tradition, Native American and indigenous tradition, is the medicine of an animal. So it's not the pet. Let's say you have a dog. It's not necessarily your exact dog uh, that you have in your house that you've named and you take care of, but it's the energy of the and the spirit of dog itself, the medicine of dog. 
which in uh, Native American medicine, a dog res um, represents loyalty and represents companionship. Your dog is an example of that. The greater species of dog or the greater species of wolf or cat or lion is the medicine of that animal. So we're gonna be connecting with the wisdom, the power and the medicine of that animal itself tonight as a power animal. So how do we find out what your power animal is? So we're going to be doing a meditation tonight, a deep vision quest that I'll lead you through to meet with your power animal. You may already have an idea of what animal you think is, is your power animal. We often have more than one power animal in our lifetime. Uh, tonight, we're gonna find one that is current for where you are today, your questions, your needs, your guidance. We will call on this power animal that you discover tonight for guidance. So I like to think about what your power animal or true essence is by if you were to say, if I were an animal, what animal would I be? What animal comes to mind? Or which animals are you most drawn to? Images, dreams, strong feelings, just a general affinity. So, or other people will um, buy you things. Maybe they think of you of a bear, they see a bear and they think of you and they give you shirts with a bear on it, or they give you trinkets that have the bear on it. Um, I, when I was growing up, my mom was always buying me things with frogs on it because I liked frogs. And so I would uh, get all these things with frogs on it. <laughs> so it had become part of my power animal, which was about sensitivity and uh, transformation. If you look at the traits of the medicine of the frog, you can also think if you were going to a zoo, because it may not be an animal that you can be close to, it's a wild animal, or it comes from another continent than Native America, North America. You might think of if I went to the zoo, which part of the park would I wanna go to first? Do I wanna go visit the gorillas? Do I wanna visit the snakes? Where do I wanna go? So, uh, so for 10,000 years, indigenous cultures have connected and communed with the spirit of the animal kingdom of particular animals. They each have certain traits in the kingdom. So we're just thinking about the wild animal version of these animals. And then we can learn more deeply about ourselves as we think of the traits that these animals have. So this is some ways to start to think about what your power animal is. So think to yourself, what would your power animal be at this point? And you may be surprised after our meditation that a new animal may show up or that familiar animal will appear to you. And like I said, you can have several spirit animals throughout your life. Uh, today, we're going to be bringing in a power animal that represents qualities and skills and weaknesses in that animal that you want to improve that match in you and strengths in you that you want to bring forth that you need for today. In uh, Native American culture, uh, there are some zodiac signs. So just think about this. If you're an indigenous culture, you're really in commun communing with the stars, uh, all of nature. And so there are some zodiac signs that have animals attached to it. So think about where your birthday is on these zodiac signs and see if that animal uh, connects to you right now. If that's an animal you think about that you enjoy, or maybe it's an animal you never thought about. In one of the workshops, I had a student connect with this. Uh, the birthday was in July and uh, they had the salmon. They'd never thought about a salmon as a power animal. But when you think about it, the salmon swims upstream, uh, risking its life to mate uh, against all odds. <laughs> and the salmon is a powerful fish. And uh, think about all of its strengths as your strengths. And these zodiac signs with animals are your birth animal. Uh, today, we're going to be connecting with your power animal for today, which may end up being the same as your birth animal. So just look with curiosity at which one would be yours based on your birthday. 
When we talk about Native Americans and shamanism, at least in North America, um, there are all sorts of tools that Native Americans use. And we work with smoke and smudge sticks and feathers and drums and rattles and uh, various ways. That's a dream catcher in that picture on the upper right. Uh, you go to sleep and it's supposed to uh, take out, filter out all the bad stuff. So you have just pleasant dreams, beautiful dreams. And um, it's all about ceremony and ritual. And I'm going to take you into a simulation in this workshop, having fun today. Uh, you're going to imagine that you're going into a Native American ceremony. It's called a sweat lodge. And I'm going to introduce you to what that's like. We're going to imagine being in one with the smoke and the drumming and the sounds. And our meditation will take place. Our vision quest, our deep meditation will take place in this lodge ceremony. In Native American culture and shamanism, ultimately ceremonies lead to healings. And this is a photograph, a very powerful photograph of a shaman or medicine man healing somebody that's ill. We wanna think about anytime we do a ritual or a ceremony, and in this case, it's to find our power animal, we're also releasing things that we don't need or old beliefs and toxins. And that's ultimately what ceremonies are. They're healing, releasing. This medicine man is pulling a bad energy, a, a, evil spirit out of her body. Very powerful picture. We're going to be going into a sweat lodge. And I have done hundreds of these. I, when I lived in California, I had the opportunity to do these on the weekends uh, with a medicine man that was from Mount Shasta. Very powerful experience. So the inside of the sweat lodge, we would build this from scratch. We would spend the weekend with the group and we would build these sweat lodges. And in the Native American culture, they do these for ritualistic uh, cleansing and clearing and healing the earth, praying, uh, just part of the culture, part of the daily life. Um, you find willow saplings that are bendable and we would pick the willow saplings to make the frame. We would find the rocks in the riverbed to gather, to heat in that fire and in the center of the lodge. Uh, we would spread hay on the dirt floor. So there's lots of air in the hay. And then we cover with blankets. You can see on the bottom picture, uh, tarps and blankets. So it's real sealed in there. Okay. The fire would burn outside the door and heat up those rocks until they're gold, they're bright red. Uh, then the, um, rock bearers, they're called, usually men with shovels, would carry each rock in individually. The medicine man sits just on the inside of the door, inside, and blesses each rock and puts some medicine, some herbs, some sage, some mugwort, uh, some cedar on the hot rock, and then they put it in the center of the lodge. So I want you to picture this. You're going to go into this uh, lodge with everyone as you go through that door you bend down and you say all my relations you say a prayer to your ancestors as you enter the lodge you you bow to the medicine man you acknowledge the medicine man who's keeping the energy of the lodge which is for healing and um, creating an environment to connect to your inner and deeper self and this is the perfect place to connect with your power animal so we're going to be going in there so as you go into the lodge, you're going to go around to the right counterclockwise and settle somewhere inside the lodge. So I've given you an image here of what it looks like when you get inside the lodge. Very powerful, very soothing, very, um, it, it's just, it immediately gives you a sense of community, connection, uh, connection to the earth and that something important is going to happen uh, deeply. So a sweat lodge or a Native American ceremony can be a very deeply experiential happening. So you feel it. It's not intellectual. You know your body's going to be involved. You're breathing. We're going to be chanting and praying and 
making um, sounds. We're going to be moving some point, And that's what we're going to do today to find your power animal. So just picture as you come through the doorway, this is the medicine man to the right. You're coming around the center and you're going to move in a counterclockwise position. So you go all the way deep in, or you might just want to sit down right next to the door, sit down close to sit down right away. You're going to decide how you want to sit down when you come into the lodge. In your handouts, um, I asked you to print this uh, template, and this is going to be your medicine wheel, which is also the floor of the sweat lodge. And uh, you're going to label it in the four directions, because when we are doing this ceremony and discovering our power animal, we also, in the shamanic practice, pay attention to the four directions. So at the bottom of this circle, just mark south. At the top, north. On the right-hand side, make it east. And on the left-hand side, make it west. Okay. And then because we enter the lodge on the east, which is the beginner, think about the sun coming up. Uh, we enter in as a beginner. Um, we're going to enter in the east. And uh, so you can turn your wheel. This becomes a medicine wheel. You turn your wheel so that east is at the bottom. Okay. And make a little bracket for a door. Okay. And then you're going to um, imagine again, oops, as you come into this lodge, remember, here's the door. You're walking in. You come into the lodge and just see where you would want to settle. You're coming in the door on the east. You go to the right. You're going to go counterclockwise around the circle as you, um, with great honor and prayer, enter this sacred lodge. You're going to move uh, around the circle counterclockwise and decide on a place to sit. Where do you want to sit in this lodge? And you can close your eyes to imagine. Um, praying at the doorway, all my relations. You can hear drumming, you can smell the smoke uh, of the medicine, of the herbs and the fire. And as you see the medicine man, as you enter to the, your right, you honor the medicine man. And then do you want to sit close down there or do you want to keep moving around the circle? This makes a difference. Where do you intuitively want to go inside this lodge? You can just give it some thought and see where you want to go. And mark it on your, your medicine wheel. This is going to be called your medicine wheel. All right. Remember, you have the four directions. You're entering in the east. Make the bracket of the doorway on the east. And just see where you would be sitting. Where would you sit? Would you walk all the way around where you're in the south? Would you, where would you, where would you walk, uh, sit down? Okay. And just take note of that and just... Um, color that or you know make an x there that's where you're going to sit all right so you see where you sit in the uh, medicine wheel okay very important now as we come into this lodge we're going to be uh, sitting in our spot in this lodge it's called a lodge and we're going to be closing our eyes and we can lay down so you want to find a place to lay down you're going to be listening to my voice in this video listening to my voice you're going to lay down and you're going to go into a deep vision quest. So make sure you can close the door. You won't be disturbed. The room, the lights can be turned down. You can be in a comfortable place to follow my voice, do a meditation and uh, go deeply. I'm just gonna give you the points of what we're gonna be doing in this meditation and deep vision quest to find your power animal. So uh, you won't be surprised as I'm guiding you. So when you lie down, you're going to be in your comfortable place. You're going to, we're going to, I'm going to lead you on a journey, an internal journey. And at some point at the, towards the end of the journey, you're going to get up and dance with the animal that you connect with. All right. So you want to be able to stand up where you are and do some movement, dance around. All right. Uh, so don't have, don't be too close to a desk or something. Give yourself some space. All right. And in this journey, we're going to be visualizing a pond with a hole at the bottom and a tunnel. But just know that it's going to be comfortable and not scary. 
And um, I want you to note that when you do meet your power animal, you want them to be able to present to you in four directions. So they can turn to the north and present to you. They can turn to the south and present to you. They can turn to the east and the west. Okay, it's very important that the animal shows you all its sides and then you'll know it's your power animal. And I want you to note that if the animal is scary to you, it bears its teeth or is somewhat hostile, that's not your power animal. If there's a creepy crawly like a spider or something that scares you, that's not your power animal. In the vision, you'll turn away from this and uh, continue on until you see your power animal. If for some reason you're too scared or it, it, it's not right, that's okay. You can end the journey and just try it again another time. When you find your power animal, you're going to hug your power animal and bring them to you. Even if it's a hawk, you're still going to be able to hug the animal and bring to you. And you're going to bring it out to the uh, pond at the edge. You're going to blow air, blow your breath into your palms three times. <sighs> and you're going to press your palms to your stomach, your solar press solar plexus at your stomach to seal and press this animal to you, okay? And then there'll be some drums and you're gonna stand up and you're gonna dance with your power animal. You're gonna feel it inside you, feel it around you. So you can start to uh, be in the world now consciously with your power animal, all right? So get yourself ready. Find a place where it's dark, you can close the door, you won't be disturbed, you can lay back on a comfortable spot, the lights are down, but also be able to stand up when you're ready and do a little dancing with your power animal. So set your space up and get ready to meditate. And you're going to join me in the lodge, okay? So imagine that you're in the lodge and you're seated in that spot where you decided you'd be, okay? And remember, your power animal may be the one from the beginning of this video that you thought, hmm, maybe um, a wolf is my power animal, maybe a polar bear. Let yourself be surprised if it's a different animal that greets you in tonight's vision quest. Lie down. Make sure to dim the lights. And make sure you've given yourself room to dance with your animal when we're ready. Your animal is a guide to support you as a healer. We must heal ourselves and then we can heal the earth. So with your eyes closed, take deep breaths. Decide that you're coming into a deep state of meditation. We want to find your deeper self, all knowing, wise, We will journey into a primordial time, searching for your original nature or power animal. We will uncover your real self and within your real self dwells your power. This is the power we are here to discover. Let's go back in time to your beginnings. During this dream, and vision quest, I want you to become aware of your physical being. Think and feel your skin, your flesh, your organs. Be conscious of where they are in your body. Be conscious of your intestines, your skeletal structure, 
your bones. Try to feel them actually within you. Take a moment to experience your stomach as distinct from your intestines. Feel the fullness of, or the emptiness of your stomach. Feel the energy movement in your intestines. Now feel your heart beating. Take a deep breath and sense the expansion of your lungs. Feel your ribs moving in and out. In and out. Now tense your leg muscles. Feel how they're held in place by the leg bones. Realize how perfectly your body functions and how much you take it for granted. Realize how your organs and glands feed your flesh. And realize that your blood moves throughout your body without you even thinking about it. Let your consciousness wander through your body. Allow your mind to look for your true self that sacred place of power within you, your original nature. Take your time. And when you find that secret place of power within, remember it. You have come to power because you desire to see. Let power help you. Through the process of mind, we will journey to the lower worlds. I'm going to provide you with the opportunity to discover your original spirit nature or power animal. Your power animal is a force of energy that equates with your own true nature. Your power animal is never a fanged creature that bears its teeth. It's never a creepy crawly. If it shows like this, turn away and go on. If it persists, come back out and end the journey. Do it at another time. Now let your thoughts clear completely. Take a deep breath and relax your muscles completely. Roll your eyes up in your head. Visualize white light emanating from the crown chakra in the top of your head. Rest in the gold light, feeling it surrounding and protecting you. Now you are walking across a green meadow with red and yellow flowers blooming everywhere. You stop and smell them and enjoy this scene. The temperature is perfect. Be aware of the sounds around you. Prairie dogs, sweet grass in the breeze. It's early summer. There's a pond up ahead shimmering in the sunlight. And as you take all this in, you realize that you are completely alone. There's no one for miles. You decide to take a swim in that pond. Slip off your clothes and go for a swim. You dive under the surface and you realize you can breathe underwater. A surge of excitement 
hits you as you see a hole at the bottom of the pond. There's a tunnel there. You remember what we're going to do. You go down the tunnel at a comfortable, and it's a comfortable width, and you come out the other end of this tunnel with ease onto a grassy plain. As you come out onto this grassy plain, an animal presents itself. Ask it to present itself from four different sides, north, south, east, and west. When this happens, you approach the animal and put your arms around it. Physically, cross your arms over your chest and return to the tunnel you came from. Bring the animal up the tunnel with you and lie on the side of the pond. When you reach this side of the pond, sit up in your meditation now, sit up and you're sitting up with your animal. Blessed beings come forth. Blessed beings of the four directions and sacred animal, sacred mother and father, sky, keep us safe. Keep your eyes closed as you journey. And now that you have your power animal, blow your breath into your palms three times. Put your hands over your solar plexus above the navel and press and seal this animal who is with you now and forever. You will now dance with your power animal. Stand up, start dancing with your power animal. Move, move with your animal. Let the animal be within you. Let the animal be beside you and around you. You're getting to know and affirm your power animal. See how it moves. See how you move with it. Let your animal move through you. You close the door, nobody can see. You're just doing this. Let yourself be in the experience. Confirm your power animal. Laugh. Whoo! Yell out. Ho! Oh, this is your power animal. Let your body go. This animal is speaking to you, is working with you, is here to guide you. Get to know this animal. Celebrate. Maybe familiar, or it may be a brand new animal for you. Move your body. Feel your heart beats together. 
celebrate. Know that it's dark, no one can see you. You're completely experiencing a communion with your power animal. This is your animal. Welcome, hope, woo, let out some sounds, move, dance your animal, Awesome. You now have your power animal. You can lightly come out of trance now. <sighs> Start to return to the class and just know that your power animal is a part of you now. You're going to be learning more about this animal and about yourself. Nice job. I want you to notice on your your grid on your circle, okay? I want you to notice where you were sitting in the lodge. And I want you to notice the part that you were sitting in has some information for you. So on your circle, you're going to not only mark down the area that you sat in and write down the name of your animal and anything you noticed about your animal, but you're also gonna notice some of the elements that are included. So as you came in the door in the East, did you stay close to there? So you're in a determined energy, you're in, in a state of enlightenment. Did you go more into the North or Northern part of the, uh, the lodge? Perhaps you're ready for um, wisdom and logic. And did you go deep into the lodge? You went all the way around the circle into the back of the lodge that's more physical, that's more introspective and physical. It's just being curious. Hmm, it's interesting information for yourself. If you went all the way around, then you're more in the emotions, you're learning about the emotions. So see how this animal also complements the part of the sweat lodge in the different directions that you sat in, okay? Very important, take note of that. In the sweat lodge ceremonies, there are mysteries that are contained in the lodge. And uh, so you may have found that you were in a different part. I will have this provided for you as a slide and you can look closer if you're curious about how the different directions and your intuition of where you wanted to sit in the lodge can give you some more information about where you are in your growth and in your journey. Also, this is a simple, simple chart too. If you found that you sat in that area of the lodge, you can see what your gifts are and what your animal is going to help you with and uh, where you're in excess, where you have some weakness, where you want to cure and heal yourself. And your animal is gonna help you not only with their own traits, but with the part of the um, medicine wheel that's the bottom of the lodge that you sat in, that you were intuitively wanting to be in, okay? So if you were in the North, you have gifts of being uh, goal focused, but you might um, not have decisions that are well thought out. If you sat in the Eastern part of the medicine wheel or the floor of the lodge, you're a visionary, you get the big picture, but you lose focus. If you're in the Western part of the lodge in the medicine wheel, um, you're a critical thinker and you explore all sides, but then you can get locked into a position. And if you're in the South, uh, you uh, may have found that you're people oriented, but you have trouble saying no, okay? And they put in an animal that sometimes appears to us when we're in that part of the medicine wheel and we're using the floor of the lodge and where we would imagine sitting as being in that part of the medicine wheel, 
All right, so you're getting lots of information about yourself tonight and also getting information about how you can also ask your power animal, your new power animal companion for assistance in these areas. And you may find that they match up or synchronize the animal that you uh, connected with may be a bear and you found yourself sitting in the West. And that's not the only animal for the West, but it's an example. And I'm gonna give you another way to um, access your animal. You're gonna think about the animal by type. And this is a really quick way to get into understanding your animal. Um, is your power animal that you discovered today a grazer, like a deer, elk, moose, horse, antelope, other animals that eat grass? And you're just going to find that you're good at some things and also what that animal is helping you with. Um, the uh, animal may be a predator, um, a bird predator or um, a cat, a lion, um, panther, eagle, hawk. You're going to see that um, that you're assertive and there's some other things that you want to change and get a healing on. If you found a songbird when you came out the other side in that open field and was a songbird, it is very rare, it could be a hummingbird, songbird, um, you will find that um, you tend to have, need some protection. Um, you can be romantic, you can be um, entertaining and just see what your songbird has to say. Um, or your animal may be of the ocean or water, whales or dolphins of the deep sea. Um, you may find that um, you're into the unknown, you're into big areas. So there's something to think about by the animal, by their type. And the other ways to connect with your animal after today's workshop is to learn everything about the animal. What does it eat? Where does it live? If you have the bear, you might realize that the bear eats honey. So you wanna add some sweetness to your life, but it also hibernates with its young. So, and uh, you want to uh, have your projects to yourself until you're ready to reveal them. You don't want anyone to, to uh, sabotage your projects. Um, maybe look at how the animals portrayed in mythology or popular stories or cartoons. Um, their gifts are revealed in the exaggerations. Maybe elephants have a good memory and owl is wise. And then if your animal isn't a domestic or easy animal to be around, you might have to go to the zoo. Where can you find the animal in nature or go to the zoo? Uh, you can also look at pictures of the animal. It may be a mythological animal like a horse with wings, a pegasus, or a dragon. So research and see all the special traits that that animal has and which traits it, it might have weaknesses and which that it's strong in. You can ask this animal to start to appear symbolically in your world. So let's say a zebra is your power animal. You might see zebra stripes on a bag when you're at the store. You have a butterfly. You might see a butterfly sticker on a car and you're going to look for this animal appearing to you, just reaffirming that it's with you in the world. Just ask it to be. When I, when I was <clears throat> young and in my 20s, I got very excited about having the wolf as my power animal. I did my first journey and the wolf appeared to me. I found out the wolf is a teacher. I'd always been a dog person, but this wolf appeared to me. And soon after, uh, a, neighbor, a new neighbor moved in upstairs and she had a wolf as a pet. It wasn't a dog, 100% wolf. So a real wolf moved in above me and she needed help walking her. Her name was Luna, the, dog, the wolf. And so I would walk Luna and realize the power of the wolf. She didn't sniff anything or any other dogs. She was above it all very wise. Her communication was very deep. And I got to know this wolf, but how miraculous. She actually moved in above me. When I asked for wolf medicine, a wolf moved in above me, representing that my power animal medicine was in that lady's pet. <laughs> very powerful. So expect miracles from your power animal. I also represent uh, recommend especially the medicine cards. I've had this book and cards for uh, 30 years. Um, it, it's fantastic. It's all online now, but it's fun to have the actual book and uh, cards. You can pull a card, but I, I love the book. 
And if you discovered a deer is your power animal today, you open up the book to see what does the deer represent? Gentleness. And it gives you all sorts of ways to think about the traits of that animal. And again, they're online as well. So you can Google this and look it up. Um, there's various authors that have done vision questing and traveling and found about, about their power animals in their real life stories. Carlos Castaneda's true story of working with a shaman. Taisha Abelar worked with a Mexican shaman. Uh, Lynn B. Andrews, her famous book, Medicine Woman. Uh, she works with a, a Native American medicine woman. And these are all true stories. They're uh, her actually working with medicine. And she has um, uh, various programs on power animals, vision quest, writing, and spirit. She's an excellent writer, all her books. And Alberto Villalodo is a South American uh, shaman. And he writes extensively. My favorite book by him is The Four Insights. So I recommend these resources next. And of course, you can always contact me, toriquisling.com or tori at toriquisling.com. Uh, you can reach me with your questions about this topic tonight. You can also get a reading about it and uh, visit me for more upcoming events. So thank you for joining the workshop and uh, enjoy your power animal.